Welcome to the Nuclear Snail Channel, where I have just changed the allegiance of this ancient armor piece. Or, to put it into less dramatic terms, someone bought this scrap metal armor from me, and I have uh, now changed the background color, or <laughs> the padding color of it, to match their character theme, their clan character theme, which happens to be blue. And I've also added their logo, and I think this looks amazing. So before it looked like this, the color palette, um, more like this on the front side. So the typical nuclear snail, olive, something, something, uh, as some of you call it, European color palette or whatever. Basically the stuff I usually do. I have done some blue in the past as well, but not as often. And I, I gotta say this looks really sharp. I like how, how this looks. So I haven't done the back yet and we're gonna do that together. And uh, it's gonna pose some unique interesting challenges. Uh, I have started already on a piece as you can see here, but the rest of this padding still needs to become blue in order to fit the character theme. Uh, before we go there, let us take a look at what I've done here. So as you can see here, I haven't done this perfectly on purpose because this is a very chaotic looking piece. So it looking like it was painted blue after the fact of it being made at some point in the world of the LARP, in, the, in that fictional universe, is okay. It doesn't need to look for this character as if it was tactically decided that it needs to be blue and made that way in a factory or something like this. It's not that kind of a faction, okay? So here I can easily get away with just not painting some of it and leaving it looking as if it was painted in that world. If you see it that way, I mean, if just looking at it from a distance or even from this distance, I'm just like, yeah, that's a, some blue fabric with some discolorations and stuff. I've purposely added some discolorations here. So I have imperfectly painted it using a sponge, uh, can use a brush or just gloves and just smear the paint there. Um, what I had also done was using some of this uh, painter's tape to glue around the edges like this. I'm going to show you just like this and it sticks really nastily to the gloves just you know all around the piece and you can see I can lift this a bit here uh, so that I do not paint um, my metal so much because I wanted to actually leave it like this now there are some still um, some paint blobs yeah let me go <laughs> there are still some paint blobs um, on the edge of this and I don't like how this looks like this just kind of doesn't roll well with me I want this to not be there I don't mind if it's a few specks here and there but I don't want it to look painted after the fact you know I've, I've just said I'm fine with it looking that way well yes but it's spilling into the blue just um, kind of creates an unpleasant aesthetic effect as opposed to an unpleasant story effect because I want to have a clear, sharp border between those two materials. And that color, uh, it has the result that it bleeds them into each other and I do not want that. So I've just removed it all. And also here it's not that bad if uh, there is like a tiny bit of it here and here I mean there is also this obvious logo of the group in the middle and it's also blue and it looks awesome but what I don't want is those accidental bleeds so this looks very controlled although it's very chaotic looking it's a very controlled kind of chaos aka the chaos that anyone with decent skill or desire to gain decent skill in post-apocalyptic costuming should be striving for. Anyone can do just chaos, but all the good art artworks you see, maybe even your own, if they are good, are gonna have some level of control, whether you even understand it or not. Um, some people even don't. Some people just instinctively do controlled chaos and they don't realize how much control there is behind what they're doing, which is awesome. Um, but it's interesting to behold anyway back from the theory to the practice let's flip this over and uh, let's see if this has already dried I've just 
sprayed it so I don't want to ruin it accidentally. Yeah, this seems to be dry enough. This was a tough stencil, by the way, because uh, it's really uneven here. I might make a video how to make that sort of a stencil on uneven surfaces. But for now, actually, let's not flip it over. Let's just put it like this. So, what we want to do is paint this. By this, I mean this padding, which is not the same material as on the other side, but it's also a fabric. Uh, we want to paint it blue without painting the metal blue. I've done some experimentation here and it gave the metal some sort of a tint. So uh, just to show you what that looks like, let me take some more blue paint right here. And we are gonna just continue up here in this hole because I want it to look like this padding is blue. Whether or not it was painted blue in that universe or not, or if it was fabricated as a blue fabric from the get-go, I don't care. What I don't want it to look like is like in those holes it remains olive because that just looks like a lazy ass paint job. Um, so I'm gonna just violently press that paint into that hole, but you will also see it, of course, stains the metal, and we don't want that. So the big difference between metal and fabric is that fabrics are softer than metals. So that means I can just wipe off the paint while it's still wet from the metal. Now, it will leave that tint. I'm not unhappy about that tint. It's okay. However, I want it to be less. And in order for it to be less, I'm gonna use a piece of sandpaper and a piece of polishing fleece on this. Um, so let's start with the sandpaper around where our hole, hole was or is. And I'm also pressing it into, the, into this recession right there because this is a 3D shape of metal here. So I'm just pressing it right, right into that. I'm not afraid to rub my fabric a bit with the sandpaper. It won't remove the paint because the fabric just soaked it up. So I'm not worried about that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with a piece of polishing fleece like this. There we go. So this looks actually nice. And I wanna continue in the same fashion with the other um, parts of this. I'm gonna remove some of the excessive blue paint here, buff this up a bit. So, um, if you want to call it unfortunate, then the unfortunate side effect of this technique is that those metal parts are going to get a bit tinted. Um, I don't want them to get tinted too much, but I want to fill the holes. So I've cut some, um, you know, it's a sort of a washing cloth, like you soak this with your, um, with your washing, what, what, what it's called, Spülmittel. <laughs> it's not uh, for washing clothes, it, it's for washing dish, di di dish washer, di dish soap, right. Um, you soak this with that usually. I've just cut a strip of that and uh, I'm just gonna put it into paint and I'm just gonna go into those holes. This is the first time I'm doing this technique, by the way, and I'm realizing that I did not nearly get enough of it, so I'm really gonna get a fat blob and just blob it right into that hole and twist it a bit. So there we go, that is, that is good. I like that. It just saturates that hole and if you can, can look closely, I hope the camera shows it, there is some velcro beneath this, it doesn't have any function, it's just there. Uh, remnants of the tactical vest this underlayer was from. Uh, and it really soaks this up because it's so much paint. It's like super wet in there and saturated. That's how I want to fill those holes. Uh, here is another hole. This one is a bit less. Uh, there is no Velcro in there, so it needs a bit less paint. But I'm just gonna dab it anyway. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this last big hole right here. Uh, so this way I'm avoiding just 
going with a huge sponge and just soaking everything and then having to scrub this metal a lot because again well I'm not against a slight blue tint uh, because it's just not worth the effort to remove it because in the end it's like does it have that blue tint does it not have it was it intentional was it not like some mistakes might just be seen as features or even if they're seen as mistakes they're not that important but I don't want it to be too blue, so that, that's why I'm doing this technique right now. And I'm noticing that it's not quite gonna work for those really small holes. And also I'm gonna wipe away already as much of the paint from the surface of this as possible while it's still wet, because that's when it's even possible to wipe it off, as opposed to scrubbing it off with something aggressive. Now, let's look at this, uh, the composition here, those small black holes, or if you look really, really closely, olive colored holes, I'm just gonna skip those. What am I teaching you here? That you should not do your job well when you're doing a costume? Well, no. Look, you have limited amount of time and resources, whether or not you're doing something for a client or for yourself. Um, and you should focus on the things that are actually important. So this, space in between here that is important i'm gonna soak that with paint could actually use a brush for this but i just don't have a small brush like this go figure I also don't have a sewing machine i, I do technically a chinese 100 euro uh, crank it by hand um, shoe maker machine which goes through multiple layers of leather but i, I don't use it that often Maybe I should give it more of a chance. Anyway, um, this material doesn't hold very well, so I just removed a part of it. Um, but here, that hole is painted now. So I will proceed going like this. And uh, to spare you watching every single step of that, I'm just gonna skip it, but I will show you a different part where I use the sponge here and this is pretty much how I painted the other side as well. I just dab the sponge and I just go to town. That's it. No super duper magic to it. No special super duper method. Uh, before you ask what paint I'm using here, usually I would suggest fabric paint for fabrics, duh, makes most sense. Uh, this is not it. Uh, the second choice for this would be acrylic, which this might be. What this, however, definitely is, is a water-based paint. And it doesn't stink of solvent. It also has a label which says that it doesn't, uh, uh, it is uh, free of solvent. Uh, it is low emission and it's uh, okay to use it for crafting. So this is not some aggressive kill you dead kind of paint, which is about the only thing that matters uh, for this kind of thing, plus it being water-based. Or if you're for some arcane reason are using alkyd-based or oil-based paints on a piece, then all of them should be that for the purpose of uh, playing well together because a water-based paint and another water-based paint such as this white here for example Which I'm gonna use to add some imperfections here some discolorations. They are gonna play nicely together in the sense that They do not hinder each other's drying and curing process um, However, as you can see Since both are water-based and wet they are right now mixing and blending which is fine by me. I just want this to look not universal. Um, sorry, not uh, uniform, not homogenic. I'm also going to use some fabric paint. And these are the white and this uh, wasteland sand tone are fabric paints. So as you can see, as long as those paints are water-based, it's all cool. And uh, like, especially on a piece that you're not going to wash, whether you use acrylic, or if you use like fabric paint, it doesn't really matter. Just watch out that it's not toxic. So this is starting to look just like I intended. 
I like it. I must not forget to include some of this nice grime also in that crevice. For that I'm gonna use some of my sand tone paste, uh, sorry, paint and dab it into that crevice. There we go. It's just a little bit imperfect now. I'm not quite happy with it yet, I think I need more. Oh yeah, this is dripping. Yeah, there we go. So that's important so that on your outsides it's not like all super blasted with dirt paint and in those crevices then there is nothing that would look really odd and artificial. Uh, you want to avoid artificial look like uh, in terms of grunge, right? Okay, so this side looks very different than this side and just design-wise, look at how much energy this is adding. This is something I usually do in a more subdued way, like my whole palette choice, but of course this also works. Like I've always said you can use whatever colors for post-apocalyptic as long as it fits your character concept. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Did I mention skipping any of this? Because I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna have you guys watch me paint this stuff and talk snail wisdom. Uh, now what can I, what else can I tell you about this? Uh, now you can see I'm unfold, kind of unfolding this in order to get into those crevices. Again, super important. This looks nice and I can wipe over this immediately because the, the fabric, it has absorbed the paint. It, it's not going anywhere. At least not by just wiping it with a piece of kitchen towel. Awesome. Now we do the exact same thing on this side. I'm just gonna use my finger on this one. A good thing is to now and then look at your finger fingertips, especially for right-armed people or right-handed people on your uh, pointer finger and middle finger because when you work on a piece for a while they sometimes just wear through which is when you should change the gloves. Uh, I also really uh, rarely try to save gloves beyond a comfort level where if I'm try uh, taking them off and try to put them on again and it's not working, I'm not gonna stand there and str struggle for five minutes to get it on. I'll, I'm just gonna dump it, get, get a new pair. Because time is money and time is, well, time for those of you from, who are just doing it for themselves. Uh, although, I mean, you might be making money in that time or you might be, you know, just continuing on your artwork instead of messing around with getting into your glove. So while yes, repurpose it as much as you can, like there is a limit to that. So, I'm uh, really careful not to paint the leather bits too much. I want to have them there because they have this nice reddish tone, which is an amazing contrast. Okay, there we go. And you can see here on the fringe, I've painted some of this imperfectly. And of course all of this works and still looks messed up, even after I just applied a new coat of paint, uh, to a large extent because I've applied mechanical distressing to this. This edge is not like just cut with scissors, it has been torn and like I, I had applied some uh, devastation upon it. That is why it's looking as it does. And the same spiel on this side again. Just fill it up. Wipe it off. Slight tint on the metal. Doesn't matter. Looks cool. And now we're gonna go for those holes. I've decided to make this video despite it being self-explanatory the first time I thought about it because it was like maybe it's not self-explanatory you know because a lot of people get hung up on those things like can you just like repaint your stuff 
would be a legit question for someone to get hung up on. And they would probably also be forever scrubbing their stuff to make it like perfectly separated, like remove the entire blue tin because, oh my god. Like one of the freedoms and one of the amazing things about post-apocalyptic costuming is that you don't have to worry about some of the things you would have to worry about in cosplay, reenactment, um, maybe even some fantasy, like free fantasy designs. Uh, on this side I'm filling the holes because those look kind of too big for me to leave out. I'm gonna leave those two uh, inside of which there is some white. So if I show it to you closely here, you see some of them have white behind them. Here we are. Like those I will leave because white uh, is a nice color combination with this blue. And it's also not the original olive tone. And you see I'm, I'm making quite a mess here. Actually giving this whole thing a bluish tint by now, but as I've said, that's okay. Fill up this big one. There we go. A couple of small ones. There is certainly some better tool for this because this improvised tiny sponge thing that I made here is really falling apart quick. But hey, I don't need to do this forever. I just need to do this like, for a couple more holes and then I'm done. Ah, that's a mess. And this kind of thing happens to me a lot. Like, I'm really not, not a very patient person. Whenever I'm crafting something, I'm just gonna go at it and fix whatever possible problems later. I can't really just be super precise with every move, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. Like some, some parts or some steps re require absolute precision, otherwise they look like crap. For example, making stencils uh, in a lot of cases, even if your desired stencil effect looks chaotic. Okay, so we have this now. And now I'm gonna get rid of some of that blue tint, especially on the creases here because I want those edges to shine. Because as soon as the edges of your metal shine, and I'm saying just shine, do not sharpen your stuff, just make it shiny, that's a huge difference. Um, as soon as that happens, the 3D structure, or generally the structure and form of your item just becomes so much more present. And that is actually something you want a lot of times for, um, well, for dominant elements, such as this metal is on this design. Now, what does this look like? Well, it does have some bluish tint. It does look like it has been painted after the fact. And by after the fact, I mean somewhere during the in-fantasy lifetime of this item. And that's okay by me. Right? I think I might have said something before about that I'm not wanting too much of it on the metal. Uh, yeah. Like, whatever. Like, really. And if I'm saying, like, whatever to stuff like this, so should you. You should just also develop an instinct and then understanding in which cases it's, like, whatever and in which cases it's important. And as you can see, it's not as whatever as I would leave it as it is. I'm still giving it a couple of goes to weaken that blue tint on the metal again because of the reasons I named before when working on the front, on those edges, with the sandpaper, where I said I don't want them visually to flow into each other. I want them to be separate design elements. And I still do. So while the tint in the middle somewhere on the metal piece is not that bad, 
I do want to avoid them flowing into each other. Right, I'm gonna give it just a couple more random goes with the sandpaper. I'm gonna leave these belts in olive, by the way, just because I don't want to make everything blue. If everything blue, nothing is blue, <laughs> sort of thing. I want it to be a, the dominant color and I want it to pop out, but I don't want it to be everywhere. And by the way, the composition with which it will go, give me just a sec, you might have seen this one before. It's my corset that I've made with my scraps of fabric and wooden glue. So this looks awesome. Like this looks like the kind of controlled chaos that I'm going for here. Let's check it out, how it looks with the front thingy. Yeah. Amazing, nice contrast here. And then we also have this chaotic looking fabric here underneath. I like it. And uh, I'm right now I'm not even putting it on, I'm just looking at it how, uh, how does it look just color and material wise. So if I hold it here, you can see we have uh, yellow or orange, which is a warm color, we have blue and we have green. So that's like a three-way complementary contrast, but in a really cool kind of subdued way because of all the distressing and grunge. Uh, we even have some red in here, uh, right up here, right, so this fabric is kind of like a chaos fabric. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode and could learn a and uh, make fun of a thing or two uh, regarding what I've shown you. And uh, if you are not yet in the Nuclear Snail community group on Facebook, you can join. It's linked in the video description. Also linked in the video description is my Patreon page, which you can use to support me. Uh, please do so if you are a regular subscriber to the channel. And I will see you in the next time. Until then, hail the snail and have fun crafting. Bye!